My name is John Blum. I live at 26 West 46th Street. Uh, most people have come up here. Excuse me. Most people who have come up here today are really speaking about the building and their objection to it. I too think it's far too big and far too intrusive, especially the parking garage that extends 200 feet up to up 46th Street. But I have a much bigger problem, and my problem is with the process that is allowing this to take place. Okay, this area has been deemed an area in need of redevelopment. Okay, everyone in this room knows what the area looks like. So I'm just going to read a paragraph from the redevelopment law and the redevelopment process in New Jersey. What kind of neighborhood can be found to be an area in need of redevelopment? The area must be de deteriorated, meaning it must contain vacant city-owned buildings that are not likely to otherwise be developed, abandoned commercial or industrial sites, buildings that have been destroyed by fire or other disasters, or a significant number of buildings that are substandard, unsafe, or unfit for living or working. I'm going to ask a question to the City Council. Which, build, which, which properties on this site are vacant and city-owned? That's a question for the planning. We, didn't, we don't approve it for that. The planning board did. So There's no properties. You're voting. There are no that. properties Mr. like that. Correct. Of course. Well, I didn't hear what? None. There are no vacant properties or city-owned properties. Oh, I didn't hear that. There's one. Are there, there any? Are there is one empty lot. It's not city-owned. It's Resnick's property, Gary. Okay? There was a the disgusting house on it. We made him knock it down. Okay? Not city-owned. It's his backyard now. John, I'm Thanks, answering. Thanks, Gary. I know you're trying to help. Okay. It's okay. Okay. Abandoned commercial or industrial sites. None. Which one of these properties on this site fit that criteria? None. None. Buildings that have been destroyed, been destroyed by fire or other disasters. None or a significant number of buildings that are substandard, unsafe, or unfit for living or working. So I ask you a question. The planning board voted and deemed this an area in need of redevelopment when it doesn't meet any of the criteria by the law. Tonight, you get to vote and ratify that decision. On what grounds or what authority is this city council going to take an area that is not in need of redevelopment and deem it so? Well, if we're going to talk the law here, uh, you can also have a delineate, delineated area that can be determined to be a, an area in need of re re rehabilitation if a significant portion of the structures therein are deteriorated or in substandard condition. I think we have some properties that you would say are in deteriorated or substandard condition. Well, uh, I would say that, but go ahead. Resnick's. Okay. Resnick's looks the same as it did 25 years ago. And everybody in this, everybody in this room, I'll, I'll go with that. I'll, I'll everyone, go with that. everyone in this room, and everyone watching on TV knows it. The the house may not be pretty, but it hasn't been pretty for a hell of a long time. I'll, I'll agree with you on that, Mr. Bloom. Uh, the housing stock in the deline delineated area is at least 50 years old, and it is. You could say that for any, pl any, any block in Bayonne. Well, well quite frankly, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, Bob, isn't the city of Bayonne designated as an area in, in, in redevelopment? That determination had been made some years ago, yes. The, the whole city. Yes. The, the entire, entire city. city. Yes. Okay, so essentially what you're saying is any developer can approach the city, pick out any block or blocks in the city, say, I want to build a building, but guess what? 
I can't meet the open space requirement, which this building can't meet. However, if the city council or the planning board deems it an area in need of redevelopment, which you're informing me is the entire city, what are we to do? How about, how about, how about Avenue C between, uh, you know, 40th and, you know, right across the street from the park? Beautiful area. Deemed an area in need of redevelopment? Are we, are, we, are we kidding? I think they have a more difficult time getting it through the planning board, but technically speaking, they could make an application. So, so, so this building that's being proposed, it doesn't, it can't, it can't possibly meet the open space requirements, correct? On the site they plan to build it based on its size? He's doing in lieu of with the park. He's doing in lieu of with the park. Is there, is there an in lieu contribution? Yes, is it an in lieu contribution? Yes. Yes. He's doing, he's, he's doing it, a park. He's doing a park next to it and there is landscaping. He needs 17, he needs 17,000 square feet to meet the requirement. How big is the park? Thank you, Gary. He's 10,000 short. Where's the other 10,000 open space come from? A lot of that gets discussed at the site plan approval, sir. A lot of that gets flushed out at the site plan approval with regards to whether or not he's going to put streetscape on, whether or not he puts streetscape on the, uh, on the sidewalks in terms of tree plantings, whether or not he can make a contribution to an off-site, such as the park or somewhere else. Can you speak what, 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 Joe, what Joe was saying is that's all part of the process. I see some people over here. His, his microphone, I, got, I have the good microphone. Uh, what, what he's saying is that's part of the process. In, in the next, next, phase. next phases of this process, that will be fleshed out. And if you want to come over here and use this microphone, you can, Joe. So that all that that will be part of the process as as the as this development goes on. But but one but once you vote on this, all bets it, 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 all, all requirements go out the window, according to your plan. No, no, he he still ha he still has to meet the standards that are that are required by the state and, and by by the entire what the planning board has has mandated. All right. All right, I, I, have a, I have another question. In, in, in your redevelopment plan, this is redevelopment goals and objectives. Number two, to promote the revitalization of a vacant and underutilized site with in-demand commercial uses. That's in your plan. Mm -hmm. This site is not vacant, and it's not underutilized. You've got a business that's been there for 100 years, still there, occupies all the Broadway space, you have three homes that are owner-occupied. Where does that line come from? To, to promote the revitalization of a vacant and underutilized site with in-demand commercial uses. I'm reading from your plan. Sue Mac. Sue. Suzanne? We'll have our city planner answer for you. Oh. I didn't, she I didn't want, she, he wants an explanation of how the planning board came to, uh, so they should answer. She is yeah, the most sorry. qualified person to answer it. Sorry to make you get up. No, 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 it's okay. I'll survive. Um, I, I wanted to go back to the open space. I think that is really a, a good crux of the issue. Um, if you look at the plan uh, for the open space, the open space requirements of the plan say that you have to meet the requirements of the zoning ordinance, which is for the entire city of Bayonne. I, I don't have the site right here. I think it's 39 something. But uh, so what we put in the plan is we don't know. Maybe the developer brought something in tonight, but no one the council or the planning board has not and the planning office has not seen any plan the way our zoning office uh, our zoning ordinance is construed it's based on the number of apartments and the square footage of the apartments so depending on whether the developer puts in studios one bedrooms two bedrooms three bedrooms that's what sets the open space requirement so the plan says 
developer, we don't know what you're going to build in the future. You have to comply with the zoning regulations of the city of Bayonne. You also have, we're giving you these suggestions that in, in um, sustainability all over the state, people have used rooftop gardens, they've used ter rooftop terraces, terracing, different types, streetscape improvements, and people have paid for in lieu for park requirements. Now, last year, the city of Bayonne received a $45,000 grant from the Hudson County Open Space Trust, which really has been the the real prime developer of space within Hudson County. Uh, Tom DeGeese has done a wonderful job like promoting parks. He's, that's been part of his administration. And um, they, get, they give us grants to try to study. And we did the study last year with their money. And one of the parks that they studied for us with, with our help was the Dr. Morris Park. And that park actually, they didn't fund it yet. But that park, actually, in order to bring it up to a really vibrant community, it's kind of dark and kind of enclosed right now, concrete, I'm sure you've seen it, it's $755,000. So that's the estimate we have now. So the thought is, the thought is not mine, the thought is we don't have anything to go on yet. So we want to give an array of possibilities there where we don't want this guy to get off on open space. That's very, very important to us. You know, we have our parks. We have 16th Street Park. We have the Hudson County Parks. Parks are very important. And even more important is sustainability. I mean, we want our kids to be able to breathe. So the issue is when you write a plan, you put in really a Chinese maze of possibilities so that the council isn't saying do this or do that. They're just giving giving a list of possibilities which if this developer if the plan is developed the planner then has to for the developer has to look at his site plan he's got to come back to the planning board and say this is how I'm going to meet the requirements of the you know of the plan and then that's why everything really ultimately reverts back if you can't meet it in the redevelopment plan you go back to the zoning ordinance which is which is where it is I was shocked to find out that there is no open space requirement for, commer for commercial spaces in our, in our zoning ordinance. It's just in our, for residential. Mm -hmm. So we've been tweaking when a, when a residential, when a, a commercial guy comes in, like Rendina just came in with the, um, with down on the other part of Broadway. We really negotiated with him to get some open space because we don't want him to come in and develop a block without open space and he was reasonable and he's working with us on doing open space. So we try to get open space wherever we can and we just try to look at the possibilities that are in that zone and we'll have to see but they're not going, there's no in lieu of like not doing anything for open space they have to do something and they have to meet the minimum requirement not not they have to meet the minimum which would be what's in the zoning ordinance okay you know I, I I've, I've been to every meeting and uh, we keep hearing that the that there's no plan we don't know what it's going to look like but we have a picture right over there um, I mean we must have a pretty good idea of what he's going to do right no it's I, 88, I it's 88 units they brought this plan I, I tonight it's a rendering but they brought this plan tonight. I have never seen this plan before. I think they, I honestly, I haven't talked to them. I think they probably produced a plan because they, there was stuff that was put out um, that doesn't look like that. Um, to me, that's probably more reflective. I just counted the stories. It was seven stories over a three-story base. Mm. That's more uh, what they had said or what the city had said right. it would be. So if I, I looked at that, the base is three stories, 30 feet, and uh, the seven stories of housing, which is more conducive to what is in, you know, okay. in there. Uh, I appreciate that. So, so there's, there's been a, there's a lot of comments that this is gonna revitalize the area, uh, bring in new businesses, and what have you. Do you have any documentation that supports those comments. I'm not sure what you mean by documentation. I mean, we could see it happened in other areas you, where it happened. You, people don't like the change in Jersey City, but the truth is it has. 
it has brought up their property value. It has increased their revenue. It has stabilized their taxes. The same has happened for Hoboken too. So you're saying what documentation do we have? There isn't documentation that I know of, but you can just look at uh, studies of other cities. We can look at their, their revenues, their tax bases, their communities, their home right. values. We can look at that. All That's right. what I would use as a, as a base. All right. So so you're, you're, you're voting on a project that's going to completely transform a, a very stable neighborhood in Bayonne. So what you're saying is you've done no studies regarding the impact, whether it's going to be good or bad. You really don't know. You're guessing. Okay? You're saying, well, this is what it did to Jersey City. I'm not talking about real estate values. And I will tell you, the house that's going to be right next to the 30-foot parking garage or 20-foot parking garage, the value of that house is not going up, all due respect to anyone, in, uh, any, any realtors in the room, okay? But <laughs> my, my contention is that the planning board and the city council are shooting from the hip. This is an extremely fast process that has taken place to get to this point. And once this vote takes place tonight, there's very little to challenge it, okay? You know, I, I, I just don't know. I, I just think it's moving really fast. I don't believe the city council is in, in lieu of the, the lack of answers that you've had to questions people have asked. Okay? You look somewhat confused and like you've never heard it before. You're not, you are not prepared to vote on this one way or the other. That's my impression. Okay? And I just want to address a comment that, that someone had made earlier that it's mostly a, a cohort or contingent of people in the immediate area. Someone's going to come up here who, is, who has, has signatures, over 500, from people ranging from 1st Street to 57th, east side to the west side, who are not in favor of this project. Okay? All right? I personally think these hearings, I've been to a number of them. I know it's not going to influence your decision. That decision's already been made. I can say who's going to vote yes, who's going to vote no right now. I could have, I could have told you that a, a, a month ago, okay? But you need to understand the vast majority of citizens of Bayonne are not in favor of this type of development, okay? And you don't have... <laughs> you don't have any supporting documentation that's going to say, that's, that, that's gonna, that anyone who has, who has credentials, who's qualified, who, who can say this is actually going to be a, 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 an improvement in the city. You just, you just don't have it because you haven't done it. There's been a hurry to sweep this thing through and none of the homework has been done. And the people who are going to, the people who always pay the price or the citizens who are going to get stuck with something that, well, it didn't work out. We thought it was a great idea. It turns out it's not. All right? That's it. If I was voting on something of this significance, I would have everything done. I would know for a fact this is going to make traffic better or worse. Can anyone even answer? Bob Engelhardt asked about the water pressure. Okay, the water pressure in Bayonne is not great to begin with. You're going to put up a 10-story a, a, a building, okay? Can the standpipes even have the pressure to be effective when it comes to fighting a fire in a building like this? Does anyone know? Again, um, if you're looking for an answer, I, I'll answer. It'll be in the design, but also all these impact studies like you're talking about are done in the next phase. We're not here to, to render the final, what the actual final requirements are going to be. There's impact studies that go on after the, in the next phase and then goes back to the board for approval. So yes, you're saying there are studies, but they will be done. It's just not to that stage yet. And then there's informed decisions that are made based on those results of those studies, which you're asking for. But unfortunately, that's not the way. It, you're just a little out of order. The, the order, uh, those studies come after the initial approval process mm. and before the final approval process. But so just to clarify. Right, but once you vote yes, this project's going through in some manner or form. Okay, and I think it's probably going to be the size that's being proposed. It I certainly hope not. 
I have another question. I know you mentioned that, that in, in the plan that you want to hire an architect or an architectural firm, city planning firm, to go over the master plan. But correct. We're, correct, right? Yeah. But we're doing that after we approve this, this building. Why don't we do that first? What has been occurring for the past four or five or six? What has been occurring for the past four or five or six years? What has been occurring for the past four or five or six years is that the plan um, are always going through these piecemeal planning boards. So that's why you current the current administration is looking to redo the master plan is to do what you're talking about, sir. So you know to really stop all plans before the planning board for the mat before you finish a master plan that might take a year really does not make sense in terms of so what was happening was you were doing these small master plans these small redevelopment plans that's the purpose of redoing the master plan so the study that was done was at the planning board when this was presented two months ago traffic engineers, the city planner, uh, the developer, representatives on behalf of the city that work for the city, that have the city's interest, testified, reviewed the plans, looked at the height dimensions, looked at some of the setbacks, and that was approved at the planning board. That was the process. So it has been looked at. Some impact studies have been done with regards to traffic, with regards to density, with regards to open space. The plan is a guideline. The site plan is the actual details of that guideline. Uh, are, are those studies public? Can we can we get them? Uh, I think there were reports, uh, Ms. Mack. There, was, there were reports that were issued by uh, uh, planners, comments, and things of that nature. There was a hearing. Testimony was taken at the planning board regarding this project. Okay. All right. Well, if if, if, it, if I understand, you can't stop every project that's going forward while you're waiting to do the master plan. But a project of this size, you know, if you do the master plan, they say, you know what, a building of this size really doesn't doesn't make any sense, and the building's already built. Now, what do you do? I don't, I'm I'm not sure that's the best decision, but I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you, sir.